This is Shelton Rick. Benjamin. This is Harley Race. This is Mick Foley. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster of Business. This is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans from around the corner, around the world, welcome to this special edition of Wrestling Inside. As I'm Dan Marotti, joined by the one and only, the fabulous man himself, John Cena Sr. Wow. And the bodybuilding and WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Pleasure to have you here, gentlemen. We're going to do a countdown daily towards one of, I consider it like going to church, the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion. Every time I go and enjoy this experience with old friends, meeting new friends, seeing the legends, hearing their stories, the veterans that have lived on the road, back to the territory days, not just now, present day, but the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. It makes me feel good. It really does. When I get on that plane to go home, I know you and I talk about some of the issues that go on inside of my brain sometimes, but it really does leave me refreshed when I leave, and I'm being serious about this. So it's the 50th anniversary of the Cauliflower Alley Club. I don't think you two gentlemen have ever been to one. No, no you're too no. cheap. You won't buy us a ticket. Yeah. It's a non-profit organization. Open your wallet. Wait a minute. Well, now, you just try to push this man to <laughs> well, help him a, buy him a ticket and bring him to the Cauliflower Alley. Yeah. I'm throwing the challenge down to yeah. Daniel Marotti. He's yeah. the one that wants to help Tony Atlas. Yeah. Let's get him out to the Cauliflower Alley Club. Yeah. Let's yeah. let him rub some elbows, yeah. and maybe he can get some help from yeah. the guys you worked with. How's yeah. that? 2016 will go to the 51st reunion. Yeah. It sold out this year. This is a fab. This is more bullshit than... That is a there. true story, honest to God. Look at the baloney blowout we have in here right now yeah, with these no guys in their coffee. <laughs> Let's kick this off great, though. This no is, Italians. They don't, yeah. want, they don't want us there. You want to talk about Rhea? We're going to go back to 1996, Johnny. Vince oh, McMahon good. accepting the Cauliflower Alley Club Award for his father, Vince McMahon Sr. Wonderful human being and another wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say what you want. Vince McMahon truly is a genius in this business. Very kind, very open-hearted, um, a great philanthropist, um, and he truly does have a mind for this business. Right. Tony alluded earlier to the fact that he had territories where he could go to. Mm -hmm. The fact is, there's only one territory That's now right. because right. they've all been eliminated right. by the man who made a lot of enemies mm -hmm. when he started to cross the lines. But he had a dream, and like everybody else in this world, if you have a dream, Follow it, and you too could be another Vincent Kennedy yeah, McMahon. That's right. That's Tony right. Atlas, quickly, you worked for Vince McMahon Sr. Any great memories of him that we can throw out there real quick to the fans of the Cauliflower? Vince Sr. has something that I've never seen before. I've I never seen it before since his uh, uh, passing away. His word was his bond. And that is something that I, he didn't need a contract. Right. And like whatever he tells you, that's how it's going to be, and it won't change. It would never change. Three years later, it stayed the same. Five years later, it same. His word was his bond. If he say he's going to do something, he would do it. If he say he's not going to do it, he's not going to do it. His word was his bond, and you don't get that too much. Not just in the wrestling business, just in the world itself anymore. It's, it, it, uh, he was a, a, a great, great. Uh, he told me one time, I don't know how true it was because I wasn't around, he said that he owed a lot of his money to Fat Domino. He told me he had a club down in Washington, D.C. Really? Yeah, because black singers could not sing anywhere. So mm -hmm. he used to invite a whole lot of these black singers to sing in his club down in, uh, uh, be before the rest of the business down in Washington, D.C. And he said Fat Domino was his biggest draw. Really? Yeah, you told me that story. Always once. something yeah. interesting going on in the world of wrestling. Yeah. Well, guys, it was a pleasure. We're going to do one of these daily leading up to the big reunion. The 50th, the road to Las Vegas has begun, Johnny. I can't wait. But right now, let's go back to Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Vince McMahon accepting the award on behalf of his late father. Uh, wrestling domination on the 
the east coast of the United States, now in the world. But many, many years ago, there was a gentleman by the name of Jess McMahon, one of the directors of Madison Square Garden, one of the first wrestling promoters in this entire east coast area. And I had the good fortune of running elbows with him and traveling to Pennsylvania and up north, Boston, maybe, and different places. We would ride by train and then have a drink on the way back. And his name was Jess McMahon. He was a wonderful gentleman. And, of course, his son was Vincent Seary, a senior, and now Vincent Jr. And that's three generations. Like I told Vince a little earlier, I so wish I could do it, but I cannot wait for the fourth generation. Because I wrestle for the three, but I can't have a fourth. But, but nevertheless, uh, many of these people here have some really good things to report about such great person. So please enjoy. Well, I think this quick. It's been said many times that Vince McMahon Sr. has helped a lot of wrestlers over the years, and he's made some wrestlers a lot of money. And I've been one of the luckiest last guys that Vince McMahon Sr. took under his wing, and I'll never forget him. And all of you fans out there have watched wrestling from here in the New York area for years, and you've enjoyed it. You come over and you ask for autographs, pictures, old pictures from the old days. You should all thank Vince McMahon Sr. because he really entertained you, and I want to thank him very much. Thank you. You've heard so many things about Vince Sr. And I could go on and on and on to things. But we used to do TV out of Reading, Pennsylvania. And when Vinny and I, I'm talking about the kid, Junior. When Vinny and I get out there together, the old man knew something was going to happen. And he'd come out with those half dollars. What are you two up to? I'd say, nothing, Vince. He said, not doing a thing, Dad. Get back in the room. Because as soon as you get back in the room, we do something. Meaning, the kid and I. And so, there's not enough things that can be said about Senior. Without a doubt, the greatest man in the world. He fixed me up where I took Muhammad Ali to Japan. I became a manager, thanks to him. And Jess, when I first started in the business, he told me, he said, kid, you don't have enough experience to stay up here go out and get the experience, and thanks to him, I went out and got the experience and became world champion five different times. They said, what happened? Well, the first time was 12th of June, 1961. They said, what about the other time? I said, the hell with the other time. The first time was all I was concerned about. So anyway, God bless you. You people have been wonderful listening to Lou. <laughs> I worked for Vince McMahon Sr. when I was just 18 years old. And at that time, I had already been in the business for at least a year. And the one thing I noticed, that when I used to come to Washington, D.C., it was unlike the other arenas and the other auditoriums that I was in, and I think I could best describe it as it had class. It stood out distinctly different. I felt real proud when I used to come into Washington, and when I left there, uh, I had a real great feeling, and this is the seed that Mr. McMahon Sr. has planted that has grown into the caliber, into the world-class situation that we have today that will continue, hopefully, to grow in recognition of him. It will, brother. Man, he was a great man, but he was a great friend of mine. I, like Lou says, worked with Jess McMahon for years, and I used to drive Jess around. We'd go to Washington, and Vince at that time used to have own nightclubs in Washington. He used to come to the matches, and he said, Arnie, will you take care of my dad, make sure he gets back home and everything, which I did. And after that, Vince took care of me when Jess passed away, and Vince became the promoter. He's always been a great friend of mine. He not only made great wrestlers, but he made a lot of stars. He made Fest Domino, Jimmy Dean, and uh, he was a banjo player. 
Roy Clark. Roy Clark. Yeah. <laughs> Larry and I we just had the night bus. They were just kids working for Jess uh, during intermission. And he had uh, these kids working for him, and they, he finally put them on their way and got them started. He was a great man. He did not just for wrestlers, but for entertainers and for a lot of friends. And he did a lot of help. He helped a lot of people along the way. Sure thing. I would personally like to thank Luau Val for being quiet. <laughs> On a more serious note, it is a tremendous honor. to accept this award uh, on behalf of my dad. Okay. This is going to be tough, but I promise I'll get through it. I appreciate the Cauliflower Alley Club for honoring my dad. I appreciate the comments from everyone who <coughs> mentions my dad in such glowing terms. A lot of people in this room owe a great deal to my dad. Um, I thought of them all, of course, as me. I would never, ever be able to follow my dad's footsteps. That's an impossible task. He was too wonderful a man. Most of you know, knew him professionally, some of you personally. I had the opportunity to know him as a dad. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. And I would like to thank all of you for sharing this moment with my dad on behalf of him. Thank you for the memories. Paul Bosch was what 
I guess you'd, you'd call it flamboyant dresser. And I never in my wildest dreams ever thought that I'd ever be anybody that could match Paul Bosch until nine years ago when I made the trek up north and began working for Benny Mac. And, well, did you guys see the picture in the program here? <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, Vince McMahon is one guy I know that doesn't dress in colors. He, 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 he used to dress in flavors. But without a doubt, uh, I've learned more in the last nine years being here in the, in the Northeast and working with Vince McMahon, and, and it has indeed been an honor and a pleasure. Uh, I've never had the opportunity or the honor to be Vince's father or work with him. But working with Vince and being around him and, and everything he's taught me has, has indeed been an honor and a pleasure. And Vince, I want you to know from the heart, I love you. any of these speakers tonight, especially especially that, Captain Lou, but but I too, I started the same way Bruce did, working for Paul Bosch, and never in my wildest dreams did I ever expect to ever even have one shot in the World Wrestling Federation due to the fact of my size, my ability, my personality, everything else that went along with my package. I just knew that Vince McMahon would look at me and just say, mm -hmm. <laughs> and walk on. And many, many years he did. I mean, I can remember the times when I would come up and visit Bruce or see the office, and every time I would go out and put my hand out to Vince and, how are you doing, and try and be as personal as I could, it was always, good to see you. <laughs> All right, great guy, I love the business. Yeah. <laughs> in 1993, though, uh, I was working down in Knoxville, Tennessee, and barely making the rent, just trying to get by, and... A shot came up where, uh, at the time I was working with Jimmy Del Rey, we became a team, and uh, a shot came up at SummerSlam, and we, we got the shot to come up here and prove ourselves that we could work, could keep our noses straight, and, uh, well, got us into a job here. It, it progressed on from there, and thank God we got the shot with the uh, Body Donnas and Skip and Sonny, and... Gave me a great opportunity here in the World Wrestling Federation that I never in my wildest dreams from being a four-year-old boy, Bruce and I both had the dream and vision of becoming something in this business, and Bruce reached it the very first time he got here. He did it good, and I tried to learn from him, and I tried to learn from Vince, and from 93 until now, I think I did, and with uh, things that have happened over the course of time, Vince has given me a chance to not only wrestle for him, but to be in some capacity in the office, training guys, to be wrestlers, training guys, to what it's like to be on the road. And as you get older, you're going to have to learn that you can't wrestle forever. No, we're not all immortal. We can't all just keep getting in the ring. There is going to have to be something after the ring. And Vince has given me that shot, given me that chance. And I'm going to do everything I can to show him I'm worthy of it. And I really do appreciate everything you've done for me and Bruce as well. Thank you very much, Vince. Everybody's been putting you over, and I'm going to knock you down. <laughs> uh, he's a really great guy, but you should have seen him growing up. I remember when he was a little baby, and growing up, and uh, got to those years when he started driving a car and started borrowing my car. I was in Washington, and I go back to New York, and uh, I told him to be back at 10 o'clock, because I got to go back to New York. Sometimes I had to wake at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So, another, th another thing about Vince, he's... Uh, First class guy, and everything. But he forgets to tell you about the time we used to watch that. You see the White Castles all the time. That was his favorite spot when he was a young kid. But he's grown all out of that now, and he's become a great gentleman and a great friend. All right, it's my turn again. You know, when you're in the wrestling business, you get to a certain age, you don't know where your career is going to go. You know, hey. 38, 40 years old, 
I know what I'm going to go. I'm going to be a referee. I'm going to be a manager. Am I going to set up the ring? You want to stay in the business. And by God, Vince McMahon Jr. took me under his wing. How? I have no idea. And started working together. And he believed in me. trusted me. And I'll tell you, folks. You people see Vince McMahon on television. You know, you think he's a big-time promoter. He's very independent. Well, Vince McMahon became my best friend. My best friend that I ever had in my life. I'm not saying that because I work for him. I'm barely working anymore. I retired, you know, about six, seven months ago. And with Vince McMahon, I got to know his family. And I, I must share that with you. Most wonderful family that anyone would ever want to meet. I mean, you know, we don't have the image of Vince McMahon and the family. They're up there. They're the big shop. This Vince McMahon and his family are real people. Stephanie, his daughter, a wonderful girl. Shane is a wonderful young kid. Just got married to Marissa. A wonderful family. And Linda, God bless her. My God, she is a saint. I could never, ever forget Vince McMahon. He's my best friend. And folks, all of you out there, all Vince McMahon wants to do, believe me, is to entertain you, and that's what he... I thought no one could love the business the business more than I do, but this guy is a sicko. He loves it. And he's <laughs> going to do it, and he's going to entertain you. And Vince, thank you very much. to me tonight, too. Uh, this and I, 30 years ago this year, were married. And because, he promised me two things when we got married. That he would always love me, and that life would never be dull. <laughs> He's kept both of those promises. Someone asked me once, what is it like being married to Vince McMahon? And I said, well, besides wonderful, I said, you've heard some women say they hitched their wagon to a star. I hitched mine to a rocket ship. And it's been one great ride, and I look forward to the next 30 years. Thank you, Vince.
Now the one thing we do to end up this year, we get all the wrestlers and everybody that's ever worked in the ring to come up here and we take our famous group pictures going all these magazines. It takes a few minutes, but we definitely would like all the honorees back up here and everybody involved in the world of professional wrestling.